first of all, it was Tuesday the 6th. Friday happened. Uh, we planned on getting some recording done, and it just didn't work out crazy. Freaking day. Market was wild. Of course, you guys all know about that. Everybody has just been frothing at the mouth because of they saw this big hit with respect to interest rates and what's going to happen with uh, is the Fed going to lower them? How, how all this is going to go? Um, a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of interesting calls we've had to deal with these last few days. But here's the very, very interesting thing. You know, how many people and how many different theories there were with respect to what's driving the market, what's driving all this volatility. We had the thing that happened in Japan, complete market, just erosion, then swing back the other direction, doing the same thing within our markets. You know, there's people speculating, well, it's got to be, you know, with, with the, the presidential election. Guys, it's a very, very emotional process out there. This is people's emotion dictating where they're going to put their money next because they're trying to determine what's the rest of the market going to do. They want to be able to get in there and make a move before anybody else makes a move. Now, I've traded options here and there before, and I've had you know, get up early, try and get into that and get that going because I've been working with some folks to do that. And it's been fun. It's been cool. But the problem with it is, is I miss out on other things and I have certain things I have to do in the day. These couple of days, I could have killed it in that. But... I would have missed out on the things that I have to stay focused on. So what I've done, is I'm having to re rearrange how I do things to make sure that I can get in on that. Because you want to get in on, on market open, market closes. That's where you do. We have seen a person do the best with, with these options trades. Now, that's just the way that I have learned to do it. doesn't mean there isn't somebody else out there who's got a better method. That's just the method I have learned. But to do that, I also have to sacrifice other things. Right now, I'm not in the spot to sacrifice those. So I'm not going to lament that I lost something. Why am I talking about that? We're living in a very, very interesting world with what's going on in your social media, the stuff that you look at there. All these people claim they got this badass life. Pay me a few thousand dollars. I'll show you have a badass life. A lot of it's smoke and mirrors, guys. A lot of it's bullshit. They're trying to show you how great things are for them when in reality, they may not be any different than this view. They're just choosing to piss away what money they have to look like a badass on the internet. When in reality, they may be just going hand to mouth. We don't know. Right. We also have the gaslighting going on from our, our uh, mainstream media, from the current administration about how great the economy has been, how the border is and how they're the ones that have done the best they could for it compared to the previous administration. Come on. You know, if you're falling for that kind of bullshit, I don't know what's going on in your mind. So because of that, you're thinking, man, I might be missing out on this thing with the interest rates. Holy crap. You're trying to swing all over the place. Get what you got in front of you. Run your numbers. If it works, take it and move forward. That's it. That's all you need to do. Quit worrying about whether or not you're going to miss the opportunity on the interest rates. Right now, I'm going to have people lamenting what's happened Friday versus yesterday versus what's going on right now. Quit it. Quit looking back over your freaking shoulder. Lock the deal and move forward. This crap of looking over the shoulder, I should get this or I want to get that. You need, you need to stop. You really need to focus on what's in front of you, not what was behind you. Make decision, move freaking forward. Let's take a look at what's going on in the markets as a result of the, you know, this last week, all this madness. So we're going to start with the, uh, the the channel that I've shown you guys for a very, very long time. You know, the downward channel where it ramped up when they started getting the, starting actually showing the jobs reports accurately. Then we hit that yellow line I was talking about. This is the price point of the security back in 2008 when they announced quantitative easing. Everything before, below that was the market itself being involved in it, trying to drive the value of that security. Everything, the majority of everything above it was when the Fed said, we will supplement, we will throw in trillions of dollars, which is what they did. And we had all this run along here. And look at this, this run up, run up hard. We broke that. Let me zoom in on this stuff. We broke this, we broke it hard. And we went above this. But what happened to the break? This was Friday. Friday broke through this and we just ran up. That's a massive improvement for the race. They're showing things improve, improve, improve. Then all of a sudden, what happens the next day, which is yesterday? Bam, down, touches it, pulls back a little bit. Today, down right on it. We're literally right. See where the uh where the red line is? We're to right. At it now. I've always said I could be a little off. My 100.54 could be a few ticks off. I'm not 100 on the exact precise spot there because it could have been. You know, I don't know how that day traded. I can't go back to 2008 and see how it actually traded. I just marked it from the beginning of the open that day and left it at such. So look, we're sitting right freaking on it. This could be a support. This could be now blow right through it. We get back through where this becomes a ceiling. I can't say for certain, but what I do know. Is we also have this. 
This was the day that the Fed started quantitative easing. They announced it on this at this price point. They actually started putting money in at this price point. That's our next ceiling if we get to that point. I don't know that we will. So hard to say. You know, we we're talking about what's going on in inflation. Um, we just had ISM manufacturing yesterday. That showed a lot more inflationary numbers. I know it's not, not quite what everybody was looking at with the CPI and all that kind of stuff. Um, look at this. This is that channel we talked about, the upward channel. As we were starting to kick back up, it got out of the downward channel, started to the upward channel. And we said it was on a collision course with this yellow line. Collided with it, went above it, came right back down to it. I think this is just emotion going on. I can't be absolutely certain, but all this movement above that yellow line, that ceiling that I had marked year, over two years ago now, probably coming up on fish, year and a half at least, that right there shows that that is, pulls it right back into it. There was a lot of emotion at work in the market that day to push it there. That's a lost opportunity. Whether or not it becomes another opportunity, we don't know. But at least it did show the market's willing to go into that point, but it recedes right back into it. There's not a, It's not very sure about that position. So that's the data I have to give you today. Don't let what's going on around you deter you from your focus. Your focus is to find the properties that make sense, keep it reasonably rented the entire time you own it, have an appreciation on it, raise rents on it. That's all you focus on. If interest rates are what's driving you, you're in the wrong freaking market, doing the wrong freaking thing. Best I can tell you.